for a reason that I don't remember anymore, we decided that uh, the introductory uh, address for explaining the theme of this conference should be given by myself. I am quite sure that Regino Bruni is the right person, should be the right person for doing this job because he imagined and designed this conference from the very beginning, however we work together. I'm not sure that my view on the subject is exactly the same, but I, would, I will do my best. <laughs> uh, um, it's a, a matter of fact that this is the first time along the history of this series of conferences in which, the first one in which we uh, compare or try to discuss the relationship, not, not just happiness in economics as such, but happiness in economics as related with um, the main economic institution, that is the market. So there is an effort to connect happiness and its different interpretations and uh, the main economic institutions that we know in our e economies. And uh, <clears throat> moreover, I will discuss this point very briefly, giving happiness uh, two main interpretations. The first one is the enlargement of subjective preferences by introducing within them uh, intrinsic values, for example, some uh, care or some uh, attitude in terms of uh, uh, addition to fairness values or iniquity aversion and like this, or in a second sense, in a more objective sense, a normative theory that define happiness in, as uh, Aristotle would have defined it, defined it, that is eudaimonia, as based on functionings and capabilities, which is the main theme that will be discussed also, I guess, by uh, Marta Nussbaum. So what's the connection between market and all this stuff? According to the traditional ec economist, the relationship between well-being, as the simple-minded economist would understand it, and the market is quite obvious. Under perfect competition, the market achieves happiness understood as Pareto optimality, defined in terms of ordinal preferences. Socially efficient allocation also satisfies other ethically desirable principles like as negative liberty and some impartiality of treatment uh, as far as nobody exercises, for example, market power. Uh, this is also the, the basis for claiming the superfluity of moral responsibility in the market economy. As far as individual maximizes her or his self-interested utility function, the market system as such, as a wall, uh, allow, will allow reaching socially desirable goals. A stronger uh, version of this superfluity thesis is that uh, rational selfishness expresses the only moral responsibility of the market agent. That is, because rational selfishness is a behavioral rule required for the proper functioning of a competitive, competitive market, so it amounts to a special ethics of the economic man. Under this institution, the special ethics, the special deontology of the economic man is rational greediness. Obviously, this is not, not anymore true under imperfect market, that is the market that we know in the real life. So there is no room in this case, neither for escaping the demand of uh, moral responsibility, nor for claiming that moral greediness is the economic man moral responsibility. Uh, also libertarians who associate a moral value to free exchange would in fact admit that imperfect markets have some moral precondition to be respected. Uh, that is social norms 
such that by bidding by them, individuals may reach the market desirable outcomes. So respecting these moral norms, which are functional to the working of the market, could be seen as the moral responsibility of the libertarian agent. What is specific of the libertarian view, however, is that uh, such norm must be obeyed not for their content or goal, but just because there are spontaneous order or equilibria compatible with free choice. Thus, uh, rules of behavior that underpin the market would be uh, social convention that simplify very much the compliance problem because they are equilibria. And in equilibrium, compliance is the best response of any participant of that particular interaction situation. So it's a, a very thin uh, view of uh, responsibility because complying with this rule is just a matter of best response to other players' action, given, if, given that we are talking about social conventions. However, I would say that also the libertarian would not agree with this, uh, with this very uh, weak view because he would say that we have the responsibility to, to uh, protect this social convention from any attempt to reform them, for example, by introducing higher standard of social justice. Remember, for example, von Hayek idea that uh, uh, social justice is a sort of mirage that we should uh, uh, fight against because, of course, this would put at risk uh, social convention or rule of behavior. But this very simple uh, view of the uh, a very thin view of the moral responsibility is defective from many, res from many respects, according to me. First of all, there are so many conventions, and uh, the reason for obeying such conventions is so completely contingent that we have no reason for accepting one or another of these conventions. Why should we preserve such conventions that are uh, with, without any refer, reference to their content. Secondly, if we had the, the possibility to make a choice between them at the very beginning, uh, there is no reason to make uh, such decision just because they are convention. As a matter of fact, a convention or a rule of behavior may elicit compliance given that we know that other players are already playing that convention, that rule of behavior that underpinned the market order. But if you have the possibility to make a choice, of course we, we, look for, we will look for some different condition, not this contingent condition concerning compliance. So uh, assuming that we have this, the possibility to make ex ante a decision about which social convention or rule of behavior will characterize our interaction, assuming that you want to keep this condition of spontaneous order, but we accept to make this ex ante decision under a, an essential and very minimal condition of impartiality, we know that uh, there are very interesting new results to be considered. For example, can be more sure that under these conditions, that is, spontaneous order, uh, freedom of choice, but uh, uh, impartiality understood as a veil of ignorance in choosing ex ante the convention that we characterize our interaction, uh, <clears throat> will entail that uh, they, we, we must make a choice in terms of egalitarian distribution, because this is the only possibility to make an agreement within a set of outcomes that are uh, stable outcome under the symmetric permutation of the position of the different player. So even if we 
take this uh, very minimal perspective, the libertarian one, at the end we must be more, uh, uh, we, we must uh, advance more requiring uh, demand in terms of mora the morality that underpin the market order. However, uh, there are even more uh, relevant considerations if we take, uh, if we consider happiness under the two uh, definitions that I said. Even if we uh, stay, we, we, if we keep uh, the, the idea of a perfect competitive market, first of all, assume that we understand happiness in the sense of some intrinsic value which is part of our uh, subjective preferences. Then also perfect competitive equilibrium could make people quite unhappy because, for example, starting from a, a strong inequality could emphasize this inequality and then would uh, uh, engender uh, exactly unhappiness because, of, uh, because we are sensitive to inequality or iniquity. From the point of view of capability, a different way to considering happiness, uh, it's uh, quite clear that uh, uh, even if we have a perfect market, a perfect com uh, uh, competitive market, if we start from uh, a, a set of entitlement that does not reflect basic capability, we will end with a, uh, some uh, Pareto improvement which will not reflect basic capabilities and basic functioning. So at the end, the improvement is not relevant in terms of basic functioning and capability. Moreover, there are, uh, there are some capabilities that can be uh, typically not uh, developed within a, a market context. For example, in order to, so to quote uh, Martin Nussbaum, the capability of having attachment to other people outside ourselves. However, uh, as we know very well, uh, we don't live under a perfect uh, competitive market. So the problem is what entails happiness in the two senses that I said, with respect to concrete, more concrete economic situation characterized by uh, imperfect uh, competitive market. We know that in uh, these situations, typically firms emerge as solutions for, for example, um, the contract incompleteness. We know that uh, uh, Firms are authority systems that uh, are designed, according to the economic theory, uh, in order to assign uh, residual rights of control to the stakeholder in a firm who has at least the most important specific investment. But of course, we know also that many different stakeholders can be involved in making specific investment. So the hierarchic structure of the firm may also entail the risk of abuse of authority toward the stakeholders that do not control the firm but are responsible for specific investment. Uh, usually the economists say, the economic theory or people in the theory of the firm say that this is just a trade-off that we must pay because uh, this is a cost in terms of uh, uh, suboptimal incentive for non-controlling stakeholder that we must pay in order to in incentive the most important stakeholder. But what happens if uh, we consider the problem from the perspective of uh, happiness in the two senses that I said? Uh, the I would say that the, the, the consequences is much, much more relevant because, for example, we may, may engender very strong reactions because of the iniquity involved in uh, this kind of abuse of authority, which is considered just a small departure from 
first best efficiency. I don't want to go in depth about this, but I can make you just an example. There are a lot of experiments that uh, show us, for example, trust game or, or other experimental game that show us that fairness is involved in uh, the reaction uh, of uh, players under, for example, um, situation like uh, the, um, um, the trust game or the dictator game, uh, but mainly uh, in situation um, like as uh, the ultimatum game. But we in Italy have just an, a very strong example from the uh, from the real from the real world that is the ultimatum game that has been played between the Fiat, the main automotive uh, producer in Italy, and his own worker, where the, the Fiat management posed a, a, a strong uh, uh, ultimatum to the, the worker in terms of accepting a stronger reduction of their employment condition and uh, giving up uh, the possibility to be represented by their preferred union or uh, giving up the, the, the job because the Fiat would have uh, refused to make investment in order to save the, the job. Standard theory would say that uh, because the, the workers are locked in in the, in, in the, the company, would have uh, accepted this ultimatum, but, but as we know from experiments, nearly half percent of the workers refused. Refuse and this can be explained uh, in terms of uh, social norms which are accepted at the societal level, and uh, workers drive psychological utility from conforming to that, that social norm, if they think that also the company conform, but also they uh, drive psychological utility from preventing the company to deviate from social norms that, that, that accept. And so they try to prevent this deviation by not accepting the, the ultimatum. So as you can see, uh, unfairness or abuse of authority is uh, can play very strong, most important phenomena, uh, for example, in terms of corporate governance, than, than what is predicted by standard theory within non-perfect markets where, for example, we see uh, companies as typical market institutions. Very, very shortly, however, the, our intention in this conference was not just to uh, to underlie the conflicting uh, position between happiness in the different uh, view and market, but also inquiring the possibility of uh, compatibility between the, these two uh, aspects. And, in, and I think that a possible example that can be done for, for this idea is what I call a Rawlsian view of corporate social responsibility. When we talk about uh, corporation as typical market institution, and we talk about corporate social responsibility of this large company, usually we think about uh, uh, social norms that can be agreed between companies and their stakeholders, but that can be self-imposed by themselves through a sort of self-regulation, which is part of the market functioning. So in this sense, if this is true, uh, there is the possibility of uh, a compatibility between normative notion as uh, happiness as I defined it in terms of capability or happiness in terms of subjective preferences incorporating fairness principle and market dynamics. Because within the market dynamics and interaction between companies and their stakeholders, we can uh, engender motivation and incentive to implement a social contract 
between companies and stakeholders that can be understood according to a Rawlsian perspective. By a Rawlsian perspective, I, I, I mind a, a structure of corporate governance in which the, the company owe uh, fiduciary duties not just on, uh, to the owner but also to all the stakeholders so that uh, this can be understood as a social contract according to which uh, rights and responsibility are designed so that uh, all the stakeholder, the involved stakeholder, may drive from the company the satisfaction of their fundamental needs or the, the possibility to develop their fundamental capabilities and then by using these capabilities and this right, they are able to contribute by investing in productive activity. And so they are able to make compatible a, a, a social contract based on need, a need perspective, and a, a second step contract based on contribution. So in a sense, desert or merit. Uh, this contractarian view of the, the company in which the social contract involved uh, all the stakeholder, um, all the company stakeholder can be implemented through endogenous motivation of the same kind I discussed when I defined define happiness as uh, a utility function or a uh, kind of preferences that incorporate preferences for conformity to uh, ethical principle like as justice or equity or conformity to a principle of justice. I have no time to go through this point, but this can be an example of what we mind by talking about the uh, complementarity or the, uh, uh, the compatibility between the normative perspective about happiness and also the positive perspective about happiness and market institutions. Thank you very much.